each of these projects um, use a different approach in McGinnis. Uh, we are looking at or we're planning to build uh, a horizontal levy. And I do have a graphic that shows kind of what that looks like. Um, we are also looking at um, removing infrastructure in Bolinas Lagoon so that uh, the tides can naturally move, you know, go through that. And I'll give some more information about that project. And we're looking at all sorts of different nature-based solutions that are both in marsh habitat. That project is just starting off. Um, and then finally, we uh, a few years ago completed a project um, at Arapahoe Island, which is in southern Marin in Richardson Bay. Uh, and that was to basically put in measures to encourage sand to settle at the edge of the island so we not so that sand and dirt pile up at a rate that is similar to what sea level rises to maintain the island's habitat. Um, McGinnis Mark, as I said, it's just here on the other side of the golf course. Um, it's a low end area. It's um, I don't know if you remember Leslie's slide, and I didn't include a similar slide, but I apologize. But you did, she did show a slide that showed the flooding in this area, and it showed a rectangle just west or east of here, which was deeply flooded. That's the area of the dike wetlands. Uh, uh, what happens when you dike? historic marshes is there's a lot of peat soil and other biological material in there that compacts and settles. That whole area has dropped to a point now where it is below sea level. When, when and if those dikes are breached, and that will happen either naturally or by our design, um, that whole area will be flooded and it will be sometimes. It presents risks both to the golf course and, and to sanitary district. And more importantly, there's a lot of habitat out here for listed endangered species, such as the uh, Ridgeways Rail, which is formerly known as the Clapper Rail, the Salt Marsh Harvest Mouse, the California Black Rail, and we recently identified um, a uh, uh, burrowing owl winter location within this area. That's one of the first that we found in Marin County. Um, so this is a, a graphic showing um, the marsh location. Um, Can you make those any bigger? Sure. Oops, so sorry. How's that? Much better. So, um, as I said, McGinnis Marsh is on the east side of McGinnis Park, um, and it borders both our park property and the sanitary district's uh, facility, uh, both of which are subject to the flooding as sea level rise increases. Um, and I don't know if I can point this out or not, just for a point of reference. Uh, we are about here. Um, so you have the whole golf course in here and then this area that's unused historic tidelands. We believe that they were diked around uh, early in the 19th century and used for grazing or some sort of agricultural purposes. This is an historic map of of uh, this area that shows the tidal connections and channel connections between Galenus Creek and Miller Creek. Now one of the interesting factors of this area is it's squeezed between these two watersheds. And historically, based on evidence of this map and other historic things that we've looked at, it appears that those two creeks were connected hydraulically through a series of distributary channels. Um, and that we're trying, we're gonna to try to recreate to some degree that effect where the two creeks are blending together and um, making more of a delta type environment. And we think that this is good for several reasons. Um, uh, but one of the more important ones is that the Miller Creek is a steelhead stream. And one of its 
faults or problems with the steelhead population in the stream is its estuary is not a healthy estuary that is good for steelhead. So we're hoping that this project in creating an estuary here will improve that habitat for steelhead. So this is our cut and fill map. This is, you guys are one of the first people in the public to see this. Um, this is showing, uh, it's the best map that I have that shows what the project looks like and the colors help. The darker the red shows more, the higher the fill. Um, and the blue is where we're gonna excavate. So the goal would be to excavate um, this major channel coming through here that will connect the two creeks um, and use the material to build the horizontal levee which is here. Um, we're also planning to um, do habitat berms which are linear features along the various channels that will be higher, either high marsh or even upland areas where would be refuge for animals uh, when the tides are high. Uh, we'll be removing all the dikes around the wetlands, because one of the things I happened to mention briefly, but I'd like to explore this a little bit more, is that our projections with sea level rise is that this area is going to flood sometime in the near future. Either we're going to make it happen under a controlled situation, or it's going to start happening based because of sea level rise. And um, so, like right here is a low area in the dikes that already floods. Up here is another low area in the dikes um, that floods. So we're trying to um, protect our resources before we have any problems, and recognizing that this area. Um, is going to change significantly whether or not we implement this project. And the reason I bring this up is there's a series of recreational trails that are quite popular uh, around the marsh, and you can see some of them over here that go through the marsh. These are all going away, and we're caught into the fact that the, there are going to be people in the community that are going to be concerned about that. A lot of people use these levees. I used to live out here and used to uh, walk my dog out here all the time. It's a beautiful walk, and we understand that. Uh, but our feeling is that the levees and the flooding is going to happen, we better manage it. So our plan to sort of <coughs> mitigate is to build a nice trail, and this is part of the San Francisco Bay Trail, along this levee. Uh, uh, so we will be improving the access situations. We're working with the sanitary district so that we can extend the Bay Trail onto their property and through their property um, on its way up to Hamilton. And this is a, and it's not a great graphic, and I apologize for this, but um, this is a, the preliminary graphic that shows the cross sections of our berms. The upper one is showing what the horizontal levee is. And what a horizontal levee is, is a regular levee that we're all used to seeing with at least two to one slopes on the sides. And then on the bay side of that levee, we fill a, a huge swath of land so that we create a gentle slope to the lower elevations to mimic a shoreline, typical shoreline slope. This way, as water rises, habitat can migrate up that slope. We're doing a similar thing, not quite as dramatic, for the habitat burns, where we're putting in um, on the wetland side, because the steeper side will be along the creeks, um, very uh, flat, gentle slopes, so again, the habitat can increase as, as uh, sea level rises. Um, hi. I live uh, close by, uh, right along uh, Miller Creek, and i um, very interested in your restoration plan. Um, I noticed that uh, you've got dikes and levees and, well, whatever what you describe, but you didn't mention how that's going to affect land immediately to the north and immediately to the south. Of course, we have this airport and all of Santa Venetia that we should be concerned about. And then I think the Silveras and the uh, St. Vincent's will be very interested as well what it's going to uh, do to their, what you project uh, will happen to their property. Um, let me take this one at a time. The, um, Silvera, excuse me, 
the Silvera, Silvera property um, in St. Vincent's are pretty well protected by the, sanit uh, by the uh, sanitary district facility. They have levees that protect their facility and it's not gonna change any of the drainage patterns within Miller Creek and it should not work, should not increase flooding. We don't have any projection that would show any kind of increase or change in hydrology in Miller Creek. One of the things that we're hoping will happen and that we're looking into is to reduce or increase the amount of sediment that's coming out of Miller Creek into the marsh. Right now, because if you're familiar with Miller Creek, it makes two 90 degree turns, one at the, so at the end of the Silvera property and then one um, right at the end of the Sanitary District property. And what happens at those turns is sediments, water slows down and sediment falls out. So we can't do anything about the turn at Solera property. But for this one, we're putting our breach in a location which should pull that sediment into the marsh. What this will do is a benefit to the sanitary district, which every five, 10 years has to dredge Miller Creek. This should reduce their dredging requirements. Um, uh, to the south, Santa Venetia community were very concerned about what this project could do to that community. We are in the process of modeling um, that information and trying to figure out if there will be adverse effects um, on that community. You know, one of our goals of the project is not to create any additional flooding, um, and we're very aware of that issue and we're paying attention to it. 